Today I'm going to show you how to create tints and shades really fast and simple by layering marker and colored pencil so we can draw these super awesome colored pencil crystals. These crystals look amazing incorporating with your NeuroDoodle designs. And next week, I'll be showing you how to create the crystals and how to incorporate it into your NeuroDoodle designs. If you want more on how to create these designs, all of the reference images, handouts, and worksheets that I use in this video, and the next couple videos actually, I will link below. The package includes uh, a slideshow with multiple video demonstrations, all of the reference images, all of the value scales, a couple handouts, a rubric, everything you need all in one spot to learn how to layer colored pencil and crystal and incorporate them into these awesome designs. So the first step, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you are going to wanna choose a marker color that is lighter than the main middle tone or the middle value of the crystal. So these are three decent good examples of colors that are similar this one is kind of on the border, but lighter. So out of these, I would probably narrow it down to these two. And I'm gonna choose one that I think will work the best when I kind of hold it up to the crystal. However, the marker color quite often is not the exact um, color as the cap. So the most important thing you wanna do here is practice, 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 and do not skip this step. So I'm going to take a Crayola marker right here and I'm going to take this light peach tone and I'm going to layer it in one of my value scales. So you could do this on any sheet of paper. The idea here though is you just want to make sure that your color is lighter. Then I'm also going to practice with this lighter pink one and see which one I like the best. Oh yeah. Okay, so step two would be to choose your colored pencil colors. So we are going to choose three analogous colors. Analogous colors are colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. We're gonna choose three analogous colors that we think best make up the middle value of the image or the crystal that you're going to be shading. So you need your three analogous colors that match the color of the crystal. Then you're gonna need three darker cool tones to help us build up our shadows, and we'll learn more about that later, but we just wanna have our colored pencils handy. And then the last color you're going to need so, is a white colored pencil, and you are ready to go. I'm ready. Step three. Now we're going to experiment with two different options here. This is just the practice to see which one we like the best to build up, we're just practicing, to get our middle value of the image that we're going to draw. So with your colored pencils, you're going to lightly, in very thin layers, use your three analogous colors. We're gonna use super short strokes and a circular motion and very thin, light layers with a super sharp point. And we're gonna layer the colored pencil right over the marker for both of these, and we're gonna see which one we like better. Okay, so you can see both of these gave me some really nice results, but I think I actually like the Crayola one better. So now the next step is you're just going to practice, and just a heads up, when I did this with my students, and if you're doing this yourself, you're gonna be wanted or be tempted to skip this step. I had a lot of students coming up to me like with different markers and saying, is this right? Is this the right color before they even practiced? But I just kind of showed them that even I don't know if it's right, I have to practice first and test it just to make sure that the color combination is gonna work. So this here is a combination of these three colors and I think it worked beautifully, but you really just need to test it to find that perfect color combination. Okay, so now since we know we love this color combo, now we're just gonna practice getting our shadows real quick. So you're gonna start again with that same marker color as your base and see how quickly that marker just goes on. And on and on and on and on. on. If you were doing this base with colored pencil, it just takes a little bit longer. So I like using the marker, especially with beginners, just because it really speeds up the process. Okay. 
Okay, so before we go on and I show you how to create your darker values the correct way, I just wanna show you how your students, or if you're new to this, are probably thinking the right way to get darker values is. It's common and it's kind of intuitive to think that the harder you press or the darker color that you choose is the right way to get those darker colors. So your beginners are going to want to do something along the lines of this, pushing hard, maybe even choosing like a darker red tone to make their color darker. But as you can see, this, even if you layer your colors, you'll get a much brighter, yes, it is a darker value, but it doesn't have that lower intensity shadow tones. You would never see a color this bright. It would not appear this bright if it was outside in the dark or like deep in shadow. So you could do this all day long. I could do this all day. And you're never gonna get that color any darker. So we would never be able to get those shadowy tones in here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that quickly and easily with less work. So I stress with my students that this process, I am doing them a favor by saving them time and saving them extra work. So I'm gonna start slowly and this looks really, and I also have to stress this too, this really is not gonna look beautiful in the under layers but I'm very, very gently and I'm barely, barely pressing and using short, short strokes. And I also spin my paper a lot to kind of like just get a better angle to get in kind of the, the grit of the paper. So what I'm practicing on right now, this is just cheap old copy paper. It's um, definitely better to do this on drawing paper, but sometimes for practice, this is just more um, efficient cost-wise, time-wise. Um, and I kind of figure if they can get it, on the computer paper, the drawing paper is only gonna make things so much easier. So whenever you layer your cooler, darker tones underneath the same three colors, so we're always gonna use these same three colors layered over everything in our value scales and in our crystal, it's going to lower the intensity of the color. So I'm just gonna leave that right there and you could layer, I wouldn't go too dark at first, you can always add more. Also layering a little bit of the violet underneath. And I'm just gonna show you, just for time's sake, one that's already done. So you could see here how by adding some more of these darker tones kind of underneath, like over here I added some darker values to get this one a little bit darker. Super slow and gentle, but I'm really trying to find that perfect color combination, but see how not right? A lot of students will get turned off because it looks ugly, but I tell them they, they have to go through the ugly face. Ugly face, dumb face, dumb breath. And it is just part of the process, and I show them my video and really like point to the fact that this does not look good, so when yours doesn't look good, do not judge yourself and don't quit because it is not the end of the process. Okay, and then the next step is just like we did here, you're gonna layer all three of the colors you use here right over your cool tones, and this is how it comes out. So you could see, to get your lighter values, you just layer a little bit of white over your same color that you used, you layer a little bit of white, and then the same three colors, you just don't press as hard. And then if you wanted to go even lighter than that, you would maybe not layer this underneath and just begin with a white base. Take your white colored pencil, layer your white, and then ever so gently layer your three tones on top. Okay, so once you've found your perfect combination, you're ready to get started drawing. One thing to note here is sometimes you have to make mistakes and different combinations don't work. Yeah, but that's okay. Sometimes it takes a few different tries to get it right and it's always better to make your mistakes on the scrap paper. So you always wanna have your map, your reference photo with all your practices right next to you so you remember what worked and what didn't.